Well, hello there, and I do hope you're all well, my friends. Now, in this video, has Nadim Zahawi gone from what you class as a public servant to a just an out and out tax cheat? Now, back in the public's account, a committee meeting, SP MP Peter Grant asked Jim Harrah, if you didn't know, the chief executive and first permanent secretary of HMRC, what's the difference between being careless and being just plain negligent? Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Peter Grant, MP. Thanks, you, Mr. Hara. I want to come back to the question of carelessness. What's the difference between carelessness and negligence? Um, I mean, I'm not sure they're different words. But I suspect largely for the same uh, behaviour. I'm using uh, statutory lang language. Uh, you know, the the language in the statute is, is taking care and taking reasonable care, and that is the uh, that's the test that we apply. So we look at whether you've made a mistake despite taking reasonable care, or whether you have failed to take reasonable care uh, in your tax affairs. Those are you mentioned earlier on you might go back and look at several years of records. Is that with a view to seeing whether the same careless mistake had been made repeatedly, or is it about seeing whether it had been drawn to the taxpayers' attention and they'd done nothing about it? Would that count as carelessness, or would it be something so, else? Uh, as a safeguard for taxpayers, uh, there are statutory limits on the number of back years that HMRC can assess, uh, and that uh, is a protection for taxpayers because it means they can have certainty that they're uh, uh, previous tax affairs are in order, and the number of years that we can go back and assess depends on the nature of the error that the taxpayer uh, made in their affairs. So if they made a mistake despite taking reasonable care, then I think it's four years that, uh, mm -hmm. that we can go back, but we can't go back beyond that. Uh, on the other hand, if they fail to take reasonable care, we can go back uh, longer than that, and if they made a deliberate error, we can go back up to 20 years, <laughs> I believe. So it actually affects the safeguard for taxpayers about the certainty of their tax affairs. Thanks. You seem to be saying that the use of the word careless in this context is maybe a bit more severe than certainly I would use it. I would think a careless mistake in my tax return is if I add a zero or miss out a zero or transpose the numbers when I type them in. That kind of mistake. Um, you seem to be suggesting that within the context of tax law, carelessness could go a bit further than that. Would carelessness, is it possible for it only to be carelessness if it gets to the point where a professional advisor that was complicit in that carelessness could face professional conduct consequences? Um, so, I mean, first of all, uh, the degree of care that we expect someone to take will vary depending on the taxpayer and their capabilities and their circumstances. So there's no rule that applies uh, across the board. We will take account of the person's capabilities uh, and you know, whether it was a reasonable course of conduct, for example, for them to do something themselves or whether they should have sought professional advice. The more complex your tax affairs are, the more that we would exp sort of the higher the standard, I guess, that we would expect you to follow. As a general rule, if a taxpayer seeks professional advice from a properly you know, sort of qualified and competent uh, tax professional and ask, acts on that advice, that, is often, uh, and that often is the way that they could demonstrate that they took reasonable care with their, uh, with their tax affairs. Um, but obviously, you know, if tax advisors themselves are incompetent or uh, you know, have misconduct in their affairs, then that's a, that's a separate matter. Would it be reasonable to expect that somebody who was fit to hold the public office that meant that you guys were all accountable to them as Chancellor of the Exchequer, that that person would have a higher expectation as but to their competence to fill in their own tax? I think we're straying into talking about uh, a particular person, which I'm not going to do. But, um, you know, as I've said, the level of care that we expect someone to take is not flat across all taxpayers. It depends on, you know, it will vary according to your capabilities and according to the nature of your tax affairs and, for example, how complex uh, they are, what degree of care we would think is it, it is reasonable to expect someone to take. And we're not the arbiters of that. All of our decisions that rest on carelessness, whether it is to assess a back year or whether it is to charge a penalty, are appealable. So ultimately, the arbiters of what is taking reasonable care in any circumstance is, are the courts, not HMRC. Are you able to tell us approximately 
what percentage of taxpayers would have a penalty of 30% or above applied each year? Does 30% mean it's quite a serious matter, or is it a trivial thing that you slap 30% notices on everybody? So we have published uh, uh, sort of guidance about the loading of penalties in cases, so you know that is available for everyone to see, uh, and that is standard, and we apply it uh, across all cases. But I don't have information for what number of cases we would have every every year. I mean, in compliance cases, in any compliance case where there has been an error, uh, you know, our compliance officers would look at whether there has been behaviour that means that that error is such that a penalty should be charged, and decisions about whether or not to charge a penalty are subject to internal governance in our compliance group, which the level of that governance varies depending on the on the nature of the case, mainly the size of the case. But you, you don't routinely publish, I know a lot of regulators publish statistics for prosecutions, for example. Do you routinely publish statistics that say this is how many taxpayers had a penalty of this degree, this is how many had a minor penalty. You don't publish no, that as a matter I don't, of I don't believe we do. do. I, think we, I think we publish uh, aggregate numbers in the annual report and accounts under the Tax Assurance Commission's <coughs> report. I'm not sure from recollection that it's broken down by behaviour. I think it's... Uh, but I, we, we could check that. Okay. But you could definitely tell they didn't want to speak about Nadim Zahawi's case personally, did they? I suppose, anyway, understandable. Might not be too keen on being threatened with being taken to court by our former Chancellor, eh? even if they are telling the truth. <laughs> but Dame Meg Hellier said something I thought was really interesting, especially when it came to talking about councillors and the honours list. I just think what's good for them is also good for our warm horse as well, there. Eh? But what do you guys think? Let me know down below and have a fantastic weekend. And if you cannot be good, be good at it and don't get caught, as I get was always told. And I shall bid you farewell and take care, my friends.